young, small, or adult, male or female, slave or free, at all, at this day, particular day, without calling him a liar. And we came back home, no one at home, you know, just to say, okay, I know you much better than them, you know, you are the most great person, you know, with your character. As she mentioned during the wahi, what she how she described the Prophet Allah la yukhzika abada. Allah is not going to quit you at all. See? And he faced this, yeah, just imagine how, how severe was it on him, وسلم, to go outside home, you know, and face all these people, you know, calling him this, and, and to know how uh, effective is this on his heart, just to test it. Yeah, the most, the most person is going to be affected by that, the most honest and truthful person who doesn't even think about lies, you know, when he's called as such. Yeah, the one who is liar is not going to, the one who is sometimes lie and sometimes not, you know, again, it, but the one who is the most sincere and the most honest to be called lie, lie by everyone, you know, this is too much. This is too much. We turn back home, finding no one to just sit and speak with him, you know, and make it easy or whatever. Study it very well. This is going to help you a lot to understand what's the meaning of بِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Another example, this is maybe linguistically, lingui, linguistically for some of us, even the Arabic speaker, it may be difficult, but you may find out a way of understanding it. This mentioned in Bukhari is called Hadith Umm Zara. This mentioned Bukhari. The Bukhari mentioned it in the, uh, I think, in the book of Nikah about relation. Hadith in Zura, famous hadith, long one, mentioned in Bukhari. And, yes. Hadith Um Zura. Hadith Um Zara. Okay. What is this? This is an old story. We need, you know, before TV, even recently, you know, before, before TV, the people that used to spend the night have this old story mentioned, you know, just to spend the night. Okay. And uh, this old story speaks about 11 women gathered together in Jahiliyyah speaking about their husbands. Okay? And every one of them is going to give different description of her husband. For sure, majority of these descriptions are negative. Okay? Or severely negative. Okay? But this last one who is Umzara, this is the last woman, number 11 Umzara, explain how her husband made her house with Sakina. Really. If you, I, I put this title for it. Okay? Yani basically, speaking about many things, about his children, about uh, his wealth, about how he supply her with everything she, that she needs, or whatever, you know? Speaking about different aspects of our usual life. Okay? But, the title I put for this house, Sakina. Okay? Yeah, this man has the ability to make Umm Zara, his, his wife, feel Sakina in her property. If you have the ability to, to read the whole hadith from the beginning and understand it, it will be good, you know, just to see types of people, you know, or types of akhlaq. If you don't have this, just read carefully about the last one, Um Zara, how she described her house, and then, unfortunately, her husband divorced her. 
The point I want to raise here, here the Prophet Sallallahu highlight this point. For sure, this story mentioned by who? By Sayyidah Aisha. Sayyidah Aisha used to memorize this story and try to speak about it or tell this story whenever it's time to do so. And apparently one time the Prophet Sallallahu heard this story from Sayyidah Aisha. What was his comment? What did he say? Yes? Not exactly. Sort of. Not exactly. Yes? This is what he said. I am to you as Abu Zara to Umzara, but I'm not going to divorce him. What does this mean? Yani, apparently the Prophet, uh, Prophet وسلم, was satisfied and pleased with this description was given to Abu Zara in that hadith, which I titled it as Sakina at home. And he said, I am giving you at home, at your house, same feeling of Sakina that Abu Zara used to give Abu Zara, but be sure I'm not going to divorce him. Briefly, I feel that this is, as mentioned in the Quran, in this area, this is the major thing to seek marriage for, okay? To have a partner, you may get Sakina with, okay? This is the major aim of getting marriage. And this is the most important thing to have it at any home, at any house, not to have problems in this, that house. And this, we are in real need of it much more than our parents or grandparents or grand-great-parents. And I'm sorry to say we are losing it in different aspects. Almost in all houses, in one way or another. When I'm in a hurry, when there's TV, when this or that or whatever, we are losing it. And perhaps I'm not sure about it. Perhaps this one of the major things that make the divorce percentage climbing sharply up all the time. You know. Perhaps this one of the problems that we are facing which make it. Again, if we have good understanding of the meaning of Sakina and how to create it in our houses, I think we are going to find some good solutions for our for many, many of our problems nowadays, you know, in that regard. And this, I think, even though we, if we are not good at it, it's going to come whenever we try it. And we read about, say, the Khadija, we read the Hadith Um Zara. If you have other uh, resources, you know, to uh, understand it very, very well, we are going to achieve something firstly and yeah, now i think you agree with me that we are in need of that you have the same feeling okay so now how do you know about it we know about it from say the khadija anha, from hadith um zara if you have any other resources you know, of that regard if you want to remind me now or later on you know if you find out anything okay and to try to practice it, you know, to try to apply it to our life, to our houses, you know, by one way or another. And no doubt, I have no doubt that we are going to uh, make our houses or our families more happy than we have nowadays. This is very important. Then we have these two as not as important as this, but they have some importance for one extent to another. When we have spoken about before, we are going to spoke, uh, speak or have some touch about it. Mawadda, what's the meaning of Mawadda? What's the meaning of Mawadda? Love. Rahma, mercy. Okay, love and mercy. 
These are the two major factors that are important for any house of spouses. Right here, love and mercy. So again, this is the major one. Sukun, Sakina, tranquility or whatever. But these are very important items that we should, if we don't have it, we should have it by one way or another. It's better to have it. Okay? And we should increase it all the time. And we should look for it and observe if it's diminishing or have some problem there, you know, to correct it just to make it work for you. Okay, what are they? Love and mercy. They said, am I sure about it or not? I don't know. As some of us say, they said, usually they start by love because when they are young, you know, there's a tremendous amount of love and this feeling, you know, towards each, each other, which is eventually going to minimize a little bit over the years. This is the case usually, okay? But they have a substitute of it. What's it what is it? Rahma, mercy. And this is something of our nature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it in us. That whenever we live with any person, regardless who is this person, you know, for a long while or for a certain period of time, you are going to feel uh, mercy toward, mer feel yourself merciful toward him, you know, and feel that this is part of you and uh, you should take care of him, regardless of you love him or not, you know. Perhaps the strength of love or the uh, heat of love is not as usual, but it has been substituted gradually by mercy from one to another. And this is hikmah ilahiya, just to make to make everything work for everyone, you know. And uh, uh, part of this stuff is going to be lost because of losing the factors that we mentioned yesterday, you know. But for sure we are going to have different substitutes by different things. And one of the major things about it, you know, whenever you know what you are going to face, this is makes easier for you, right? Yeah, the one who is knowledgeable, who, what is going to face after one year and ten years and tw twenty years, and he has his expectation, he has preparation for everything, you know, guided by Quran al-Kareem, this is going to make it work for him more accurate and more straightforward than the one excuse me about this word, who lives as an animal just for his desire, you know, and spending all his time of this, not thinking about his family, about uh, what he's going to face, about the changes in himself, in uh, the others, in his wife, in his ch children over the years, you know, and the, anyone who uh, read it quite carefully is going to have better view and better understanding of this unique relation of marriage as we mentioned. That's why this ayah has been mentioned, uh, finished by what? Ended by what? إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ What does this mean? Yeah, you should use your mind, give a lot of thoughts about this ayah to get the maximum benefit of it. Okay? It's not a matter of reciting it that that's it, you know. I'm not telling you that I gave you everything behind this ayah. If you want to get the maximum of it, go back, read it carefully, and think 100 times about it, you know, how to make it work for you, and try to have some, something that uh, make it more obvious for you, that, like the story of Sayyidah Khadija, Hadith and Zara, other things, you know, and try to apply apply it practically in your life. Yes? Okay, Surah to Rome and I, someone help me to give them the number of the Surah and number of the verse. Thank you. 31, 21, verse number. This is the number of Surah, right? Surah is 30. And verse 21, thank you. You have it. Verse, uh, Surah 30. Surah Rome, number 30. The verse number 21. 
Just I want to have one comment, you know. You, uh, believe me, I, I'm not expertise in those matters, you know. But by trying just to connect it by Qur Quran, you see how tremendous of, uh, information we got about this, you know, about our relation, you know. This tells you how great is our Quran, you know, and how we should rely on it in all of our life as Yes, your question. Yes. To be specific, where it, there's for sure Kitab Bukhari is divided to uh, subdivisions. You know. One of them called Kitab al Nikah. Kitab al Nikah. And in this Kitab al Nikah, you'll have Babu Hadith Um Zara. By this, titled by this. Here, asking us to make dua for Sakina for everyone attending here. And everyone should make Sakina, Ya Allah, inshaAllah. Allah put Sakina in all of our hearts, you know, and our hearts is, you know, to the extent that we become uh, uh, <coughs> accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. Should daughters try to create Sakina at home to their parents, family, and whoever. I think this is the task of everyone. It's not a task of one person. One person alone cannot create this, you know, if everyone is chaotic at home, you know. They cannot do it. You know? This is a matter of what they call it here, team <coughs> of efforts, okay? It's a team of efforts. You know? But I, I cannot ignore that the female side they have significant role in that, much, much more than male side. Okay? And everything, the whole story, you know, will not be completed without females, you know. If, if the uh, human are males alone, you know, you will not find these buildings and these nice clothes and whatever, you know, because usually male person tend just to try to accept it by the, the most simplest way, you know, and take it and go by it, you know. Whereas the, the female, they tend to just sit down and have everything prepared well, you know, and done. And in this matter, this play, plays significant role in Sakina that we are speaking about. That's why uh, this a gift from Allah to have, to be granted by girls, you know, at home, in old days or in some societies up till now, they get mad when they have a girl, you know, and they are upset about it, and they want a male child, they don't want female, they don't know what's hidden there, you know, about Sakina and those matter, which I find from my experience, though, uh, yani, the female side, they, they have a, a more ability from the out of their nature, you know, to have the Sakina at home than the males. In this video. No question? Any question here? No, because we have time for prayer. Our Muazzi looking at me. Salaamu <laughs> Alaikum Sayyidi. question from the previous class when we sp spoke about Deen. What's the definition of Deen? I did not read the rest of the question, but apparently what do you mean by Deen? I think this is uh, understood by every one of us. When we say a religious person, what do you mean by it? Yeah, and even you find it among your children. They are not equal in, that, in this matter. You feel the difference, you know, between your children, you know, when you are dealing with your children, with your brothers, with your whoever, with your friends. You feel the difference among them, you know, and their religious feeling about it. You have this, this person who is uh, always, you know, uh, eager to have prayer whenever time is on, to go to the mosque, to recite Quran, to <coughs> the other one, he may be 
sincere and faithful as the first one, you know, but he needs a reminder, right? Just to tell him, it's time to pray. Okay, after 10 minutes. Then, time is about to be off. Okay, just I finish what's in my hand and then, and whatever, you know. And you find that, you know, wherever you go, and I think by this, it doesn't need any explanation. And you know, we know it from ourselves, you know. Ourselves and the others, you know. We feel it in the, inside ourselves and the other. I think we'll stop here. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi.